Hello America, Blake Skyblaster here, and welcome back to another episode of What Did I Just Watch? The show where I talk about movies, TV series, and Sarah that made my jaw drum and wonder, what the heck did I just watch? Folks, it's the Halloween season, everybody, and, uh, I was going to do, like, something about Halloween specials or just holiday specials in general, but after the recent events last week, if you know what I'm talking about, I decided maybe it's best we look back at something that disgust me. Something I talked about one time is that failed miserably because my- because when exporting the footage, it cut off half of the stuff that I said in there. And also my dialogue was sped up. And that, my friends, is tomorrow's Pioneers. So, just a little brief. <clears throat> tomorrow's Pioneers was a show made by the terrorist organization known as Hassan and their TV station. And this show, if I can remember half the crap that went on in it, was pretty much Hassan trying to train kids into becoming martyrdoms and hate Israel. This show leaves me disgusted with half the stuff they do. This show. And, uh, I am not me- and whatever happens in here, just- I'm just gonna say, I- I am not glorifying anything that's going on in recent weeks with the Hassan ties I have in Israel. So, before we start this video, I'm gonna take a quick moment of silence for- the people that were uh, kidnapped and died that day. I know this is off-brand for what I just watched, but I'm gonna do it anyways, it feels right. All right, that seemed long enough. So let's jump right into this with season one. Right off the bat, our main host that is supporting this propaganda and terrifying lessons of martyring yourselves is an eight-year-old girl named Goral 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 Freeze Right. Like my like if you liked my group impressions. So, anyways, as I was saying, a eight-year-old girl named Sarah is teaching this, and that immediately disturbs me. That they were like, "Okay, little Susie, you know what? Here's your script. This script is taught. You are asking me to talk about." Of just literally exploding yourselves for the sake of shut up and read the script. Uh, 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 mother, mother, mother. Yeah, that's pretty much the sum of the entire show. Oh yeah, did I m not mention that our main co-host is Mickey Mouse? I mean, Part Four. Yes, yeah, somehow these people got this cheap-looking Mickey Mouse costume, and our host, as I said before, his name is Part Four. And this will get extremely infamous and notorious throughout the series as we get all sorts of lessons from them, like telling kids to grab some sort of gun and shoot down the Jews and Israelites, as delightfully uh, displayed by Far 4. This show, I told- I warned you people, this show gets disgusting. Anyways, the show, I don't remember much, I just rewatched like this document on it, link in the description, and uh, from all I remember is that there's not that much, uh, evidence, I mean, not much uh, footage of the show, and also it began airing uh, in the year I was born, which terrifies me a bit. So anyways, like I said, this show constantly propagandas and slanders and villainizes Jews and Israelites because for some background in information, Hassan and the, um, Palestines believed that, that they, their land was wrongly taken away from from the Israelites due to World War II. So with that little exposition out of the way, let's continue. And, um, as I said, this show goes very extreme. One caller literally says that they're willing to let themselves explode in, which is through a process of martyring, which basically means you let yourself go boom boom in the name of Allah. And I think you get 45, 7 virgins with you. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. Well, let's just get into what I do know. This show is dark. Anyway, so Sarah literally uh, continues up going on and on. And yes, explode, children! Sacrifice yourself to these evil monsters! This uh, season one ends with the most dark and also hilarious thing known to man. So we find out that Farfour was given a key to, or documents to, a land from Israel given by his grandfather right before he dies with this very over the top, like, hot dramatic music, like, hi -ya, hi -ya. I'm sorry if there's anyone that's Arabic or whatever that. Finds this is upsetting. I'm sorry. This is just how it went out in my head. So, anyways, Part Four gets interrogated somehow because I guess as one of the people of Israel found out that he had the documents somehow, considering the fact that the two were in the middle of nowhere when it happened, and uh, the dude 
He refuses. He starts yelling as obnoxious. It is preachy, high-pitched Alan Chitlin's voice that's so obnoxiously loud you'll you'll wish you listened to Nails on Talk for along with audio being voiced by Fred on loop for ten hours straight. That's why I'd rather be doing that, listening to this obnoxious voice. So, anyways, it resulted in it is they all settle it maturely in a core or. You could just have this guy beat the crap out of the, this mouse person, and we never figure out what happens to the documents or anything for that matter. Sarah comes back and says, "Oh yeah, we lost a few friends, but thank you for for thank you for dying rather than sacrificing this document." Just show all I can really say is it villainizes. Let's go into season two where where we get the delightful addition to uh, Nahul, who is somehow related to Four Four. It says uh, he's he or she's his cousin. How did that work? Yeah, it's best you don't think about it. So anyways, Waze and Nahul is supposedly an animal abuser because he makes fun of a tiger locked in a cage. And um, Nahul is depressed. What's wrong, Nahul? I have nothing to be thankful for for the day of sacrifice. Everyone died. Oh. Oh. Also, I don't know the regulations for broadcasting in, uh, in Palestine or Israel. But one thing I am sup now wondering is how the heck did they get the show to get away with uh, talking about hepatitis C? What? What? Really? <sighs> what a world we live in. So, anyways, the show progresses, and uh, when you know it, season two ends with Nahul getting very ill. They tried to get him help in Egypt, but the Israelites won't let them in. And then Nahul dies. This scene actually, like, I as much as it's disgusting, it, this scene actually like, made me terrified and kind of uncomfortable. Mainly because of the way he died, just like suddenly. The music, again, with his over the top, ay -ya, ay -ya, ay -ya, some more choir music. And then the doctors just rush to his side, trying to give CPR to this lifeless mascot costume. <laughs> it, and then Sorala seems less sad about, about this and more so happy that he sacrificed himself. And they say it is your wedding. I, again, I don't know anything about uh, the religions or um, culturals of the Palestine. This is just my commentary on, on these uh, shows. <sighs> Lastly was season three, and I'm sorry that I keep rushing through this, but it's really hard to talk about this, especially when we got some very big issues going on as of now with this. That pretty much speaks for itself with this whole thing. So, lastly, we got season three, and this is one thing I do want to talk about, because it gets interesting. So, uh, Nahul's brother, who's a bunny named Asud, <clears throat> I am generally confused by the relationship of this family. First you got Parfour, who's a freaking mouse, then you got Nahul, who's a freaking bee, and he's somehow the brother of Asud, who's a freaking bunny! How the fuck does that work? Tell me! Tell me, universe! Unbelievable. So, anyways, as I was saying, this actually gets interesting. Asud, like every other character, big shot guy, no, tells kids to start a jihad and fight for what's right. For them, at least. But then we also get an episode where Asud steals, and he's tempted by what is supposed to be freaking Satan, and it's the costume. For one, looks like they just got it at like some party city or some spear Halloween. Next, it looks like he was being portrayed by a freaking child. Cause look at that, like costume saying over here. He's like, he's half. He's not even half the size of freaking a suit. He's like, a suit. He's right here, people. Oh, saying he's like right me, like standing here right now, sitting right here. It's hard to take it seriously. But not for the people who call in! Cause, yeah, yes, yeah, Sarah, she gets phone call. Ring, ring. Yeah, yeah, your bunny person stealed. You know what? Cut off his hands! I get it, I get it. It's in holy text. If your hand's gonna cause you to sing, cut it off. But, wh what? You. You're showing this to preschoolers for crying out loud, and you decide, yep, 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 snip, snip the hand. That's natural, children. Yay! Yeah, imagine a Barney design store was like, oh, 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 hi, kids, guess what? You, uh, you hit little Susie with your hand? Okay, get over here. Yep, 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 we're gonna break your hand in half. Wait, what? Oh! Imagine if every episode with Barney was like that. Strangely, I would have hoped for the latter, and I would have actually binge-watched none. <laughs> Anyways, 
So Ron decides, no, let's not do that. Let's go for the ears. Nah, I'm just kidding. And they didn't get there. Mainly because they ran out of time for that. <laughs> So anyways, as the show progresses, is what a big shock! The series ends with... Wait, what? The character doesn't get killed off immediately? Wait, th then what happens then? Did one of them break? Why? Oh. Oh. So, meaningless me staring into the void over here. Here's what happened. We sent a... We sent a missile... At, or... We sent a missile to the station. And also, in season two, there was also a month's break when when Israel also tried taking down the studio because of obvious reasons. Now, uh, right after this, they had to wait a little bit, as obvious. And then we get the season finale of Asud being pretty much severely injured, I'm assuming because of the bomb. Yet somehow Sarai is still alive. Oh my gosh, how she just won't give up. So anyways, Asud dies. And then, um, as every other character, and he's kind of a sad character, but... Still, like, good riddance as what they've been supporting. This feels more like a satisfying villain defeat than a hero, at least from my side. So, anyways, randing aside, he mentions this. Oh, oh, children always have a special place after tomorrow's Pioneer Studio. What? Oh, yes, yes, whenever we were airing, all the kids would go in there and play like a daycare. Yo, oh, it's so wholesome. I seriously doubt that. Yeah, yeah. You know what's convenient? It was right after the rocket attack. You decided. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to casually mention a little dick here. Yeah, we all know why. So they would be untouchable. Invincible. So with that death and somehow season four came around despite the studio being wrecked. We get another character. I don't know if he's related to any of the other three, but at this point, I wouldn't be surprised because they're so interested in making this elaborate story arc that for four is is a cousin to a bee who's also the brother to a freaking rabbit. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, guess what? It's Freddy Fazbear, everybody. <laughs> it's literally a bear. Oh yeah, and he also supports uh starting the jihad. I digress. I don't know much about the show. I'm just again. Spewing off of what I remember and what I read. And this show... You can see why a lot of people had a problem with it. Anti-Semitism. Slander. Villainizing. Racism. Oh yeah, copyright infringement because we got Mickey Mouse over here saying, I hate the Jews. The Jews ain't my homework. No, seriously, that's a line. I ain't saying that the Jews stole his homework or something. And that is Tomorrow's Pioneers. Back when we saw this would be as worse as things get, now you're kind of wishing we went back to it just being this and not, well, what's going on now? This chaos is really not funny. And it, it leaves me disgusted, to say the least. But who knows, that could be my Molly Yuan kicking in. So, that being said, uh, I hope I made you wonder, what the heck is going on? And what the heck did I just watch? Also, how the frick are these guys related? Tell me, universe! Tell me! Bye-bye.